Welcome! I've done some previous videos on this FLIR 1 Pro thermal camera, and I'll put a link in the description of my FLIR playlist where you can find those videos. Also, if you're looking to purchase one of these, I'll put a link in the description to this on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the latest FLIR 1 app. So there was a big update to the FLIR 1 app in May of 2021, and I did a previous video, you'll find it in my playlist, on the FLIR 1 app, and this is on the newer version. So I'll hit open here. I'm in the store. I've already downloaded it. So here it has some features it says identify hidden problems, making temperature visible to uncover what you can't see with your own eyes, troubleshoot efficiently, troubleshoot problems in buildings, electrical equipment, and automotive efficiently. It says this requires you have a FLIR 1 thermal camera connected to your phone. It says let's get started. Make sure your camera is charged. Plug it into your phone and press start on the FLIR 1. I'll accept the terms and conditions. It says new update, introducing a new experience with improved features and a modernized user interface. It says hot and cold spot, troubleshoot efficiently with the hottest and coldest point in the image. Manual calibration, manually calibrate by long pressing anywhere on the camera view. Notes, add notes to your images to document your findings. Help, learn the basics of how to use your FLIR 1 device. I'll hit done. It says to connect it, and I already have it connected. Although I think it shut off, let me turn it back on. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I have a battery charger here. If I look at the display on the charger, it says full, 198, full, full. So the second one is still charging. Interestingly, the third one's the hottest. Let's see if I can feel that. I mean, yeah, it's warmer. Pretty interesting. So let's go over this a little bit. So if I tap in the upper left, we have our gallery. So this is stuff I've taken pictures of in the past. I can hold down on the screen to calibrate. On the bottom left, we have a menu. So it says we're connected to the FLIR 1 Pro. Our battery is at 99%. We have settings. We have units, date, and format. Temperature units is currently Celsius, and I use Fahrenheit most of the time. We have our time format and our date format. Next, we have temperature range. We have minus 40 degrees F to 248 degrees F, and 32 degrees F to 752 degrees F. So I'll do the first option. Let me go back into there real quick so you can see the Celsius ranges. So those are on the screen here. Next we have emissivity, and we have matte, which is recommended. Then there's semi-matte, semi-gloss, or glossy. And it says here at the bottom, emissivity is the measure of how efficiently an object radiates heat. Choose what best resembles the material qualities of an object that you are observing. And then we have save location. So it says if a GPS signal is available, the location will be added to the captured images. This makes it possible to see images on a map. So that's probably a really nice feature if you're an inspector or something. You can have that on and then if you have an image and you don't know where you took it, you could pull that up on a map and see it was at a customer's location or something. Next we have help. We have how to use. And it looks like there are instructions. So that looks really nice. I'm not going to go through all of these obviously. Frequently asked questions. And this is interesting here I noticed the other day. This says Teledyne FLIR. And just very recently they were purchased by Teledyne or they merged or something. So you'll probably see that Teledyne FLIR more often. And it looks like you can ask a question here. It's all built into the app, so that looks nice. So back into the app, we can take a picture here by pressing the big white button. I can drag down, and that brings up the white button with the dot, and that's for video. So if you want to switch between regular and video, you can do that there. I'll hit the button just to the right of that, and we have mode. So it says multispatial dynamic imaging, infrared, digital camera. So here we can switch between the different modes. Next we have measurement. So this is where we do our spot measurements. So let's see, to remove these, I'm not quite sure how to remove these, let's see. Okay, so if I drag them, the shutter button will turn to a trash and then I can just drag them onto there and get rid of them. Looks like we have a hot also and a cold maybe. Not completely sure how to use those. Now it does have the instructions there so I could probably go through the instructions and find out exactly how to use those. Oh, I see it now, okay. So you can see in the upper right, we have the little blue dot. So that's kind of chasing the coldest part of the image. And then on the bottom left, we have the little red dot that's chasing the hottest part of the image. So I'll click on those options again. We have color, and this is where we can switch to different colors. So I'm on iron now, but we have the color wheel, rainbow, lava, iron. Let me move this more into the image here. Hottest gray, contrast, coldest, 
and Arctic. So let me go back to iron here. At the bottom we have automatic and manual. So we're on automatic mode. I'll hit manual. So now I can tap on the side and I can change the mode. So let's turn the top end to, I don't know, 85. And the bottom we can turn to 60. And then we can lock that. So there we go. So if we want to change back, we can go back into auto manual, go back to manual or automatic, and we're back in auto mode. So let's click on this little icon on the bottom right, and this is our camera alignment. So you can see the optical camera and the thermal camera are not lined up quite right. So I can drag this until they're lined up. Now I'm in very close range, and it doesn't work perfect in close range. It works better when you're, I think, a meter away or something. If I can make this more extreme too. There we go. So I just want to do this quick overview of the app. So my thoughts on it so far, I'm still getting used to it. I haven't used the other app for a long time because I'm new to thermal cameras. I do like this better. I think it's easier because I don't have the smallest fingers, especially on my phone, which is an iPhone SE. It's a small phone. It was hard to tap on things at times. So like if I wanted to adjust the image alignment, I had to hit a small icon on the screen and then had a very small slider. So now I can just hit in the bottom right and I have this huge slider here. I think that's a lot easier to use than the previous method. The shutter is also very large and the, it's easy to switch between video and not. I think there was a timer mode before. I don't see that here. So I could maybe look through the help and find that. But overall, I think it's a nice update to the app. It's nice to see when a company does update an app, it means they're invested in their product. So hopefully going forward, they'll even make further improvements to this. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.